Hello, I'm Caleb Bugars. And I'm Alana Hodge from the City School Student Media Team. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Building, Building a Generation. Generation. Our show highlights all the amazing things that our students, staff, and communities are doing all across Baltimore City Public Schools. Thank you for joining us on our mission to Building a Generation. In this episode, we will take a look at the inspirational music programs at Yorkwood Elementary School, City Neighbors High School, then we stop by Vanguard Collegiate Middle School for a look at how they're embracing peace. Media team reporter Imani will bring us all the info we need on SAT prep, then we'll check out two new schools under construction at the same time with the goal of using its own energy. Spring has returned, and so has our More Than a Game series, with a visit to see softball at Mervo. Plus, don't forget about the question of the show, so pay attention. The episode concludes with an epic event that took place to celebrate the diversity in city schools. We call it International Family Night, so stick around. All right, let's get into the first episode of the story. Check out this amazing story highlighting three different music classes at Yorkwood Elementary, where students are so passionate about music. I'm intrigued. Let's check it out. They love to be loud, so today's lesson was about songs that are loud and soft. Whether or not the dog sound is loud, or what not is so. <laughs> she said loud, let's see if she's right. And when you're able to cooperate some movement, they just they just have fun with it. Now they gotta read words and understand the pitch contour. They follow notes one after another in a song. So that particular group uh, is, is quite awesome. The thing I like about this class is that we get to sing and we sometimes we get to play with You're the instruments. You're like quietly. I want you breathing. I want flow through the phrases. Ready and one. Breathe, push out, push out. Chorus of Yorkwood Elementary. And we will be performing at the Baltimore City Public Schools Choral Music Festival. The course is like, is a fun and active place. And it's really where you can get to express your um, true potential in um, music and like your talent that you can, that, um, you can show. You can feel comfortable um, showing it around all your peers and get to learn new things from them. I love how you get a chance to meet like kids from other classes that you know you don't get to see every day and it gets you a chance to like kind of bring out yourself in the singing. The stuff that I love about music is like the different tempos that we sing of the song. Like if we sing Wind Over the Hill, it's like a real good tempo. Music is an is a art, it's a science. Music helps with so many realms. It develops teamwork. It develops active listening skills. And most importantly, it develops an awakening of creativity. Wonderful. Those students really seem to enjoy singing. That's for sure. Dr. Ross did a great job keeping those students excited about music, which is very important. And the chorus did an amazing job performing at this year's choral adjudication when you saw them training for in that piece. That brings us to our next story, where students at City Neighbors High School use music to express their self, dealing with their emotions, and coming together. Oh cool, sounds interesting. Let's hear the music. Oh, one day. Saying we all come together, make a beautiful tone, and we all have our own voice in it. The music is like, I'll always love music, I always want to do shows since I was like at elementary school. Music is just a way to calm me down and settle me. Enemy is lethal, I came, became regal, saw the face of Jim Crow, underworld. 
fun actually because me I get to put myself out there usually I'm just like laid back and I'll be like no nah, I don't want to do this so I'm gonna be like no nah, this is my first time so I'm gonna go ahead and take it I care about it because it's like one of the most things I want to do since I was small the music program, it is very, very, very diverse. My ninth grade class, I have an exploratory class. So, but right now they're learning music theory on keyboards. And then also I allow them to do some composition. Today I was basically learning some notes or reviewing some notes, which are the sharps and the flats. Our 10th grade choir. These kids, they sing music ranging from classical choral pieces all the way to gospel pieces, Negro spirituals, uh, R&B pieces, pop pieces, you name it. Glory, oh, glory, oh, glory, glory. We learn how to harmonize basically and learn how to do crescendo with each other, not just with our groups. Ooh, right now it's marvelous. We let my people go, lift every voice, just a different mixture. This is actually my first big part, because usually she'll let us volunteer for a part, but I actually, you know, volunteered this part. As music teachers, we do what we do because it helped those kids get the experience of having to stand in front of an audience. It's okay to express yourself, but do it productively. And I feel that the music room, is one of those places where they can do that. Come in here and just forget about everything that's happening on the outside. It really makes the child, like somebody, really embrace what they like to do. Become something from, like, playing music. And then eventually be able to apply to music programs at um, colleges and universities and be able to even get music scholarships, you know, for doing what they desire to do, which is music. And then to be able to teach it, to be able to share that gift with all the other kids, it just makes my heart glad, it makes me feel good, and I'm just, I'm just blessed. I'm happy to be able to do what I do. Hallelujah. That was so inspiring. I feel like those students really enjoyed that class, more than any other class they have that day. I agree. I'm actually impressed. It's good to see young people being challenged as they share their love for music and how deep it runs. Definitely. Okay, so our next story takes us to Vanguard Collegiate Middle School, where many students work together to create a peace wall in their school. And at the same time, students were coming up with songs, poems, and other performances in order to celebrate peace. So let's see what the students created while sending a positive message around city schools. Roll, Roll the tape. tape! Hey everyone, this is Hunter, and we're heading out to Vanguard Collegiate Middle School where students are getting ready for a Peace Day event by rehearsing songs, making artwork, getting cheers ready, and creating a peace wall and bringing the school community together. Let's go see how Vanguard is bringing peace to school. Inspired by the one book Baltimore Selection, Dear Martin, the school wanted to find a way to celebrate peace in their own way and engage students in the process. Dear Martin was something that was a segue for us in having our young people uh, read and think about who they are and who they could be. They're sharing messages of how important peace is in everyone's life. It helps us connect more to each other. Things they put up on the wall like uh, no bullying, no doing this, no doing that. People don't take that to the mind and I feel like people should take that to the mind more. Peacefulness in and around the school and how people are trying to like um, represent it and show it, like draw it in different artistic ways. The Peace Wall is a visual for our young people so that they have quotes and they have pictures, they have their own words in front of them as they transition classes and they have reminders of what should be. Going from 6th to 7th to 8th grade, it's clear the school is rallying around the upcoming Peace Day event with a very cool selection of performances. I was working on guitar and like it's really hard to change from the D chord to the C chord because like you gotta use hold your three fingers. Just playing a cell phone. To master B and that's kind of hard sometimes because it goes really slow and sometimes you have to memorize the beats. 
love, beauty, peace, and air. My line was, what beauty could become peace and it's surrounded by air, love, beauty, and peace. Everybody will come together as a community in a peaceful program, but we don't want it just to be one day. We want this to become a movement for our school because our young people truly need the support. And students truly believe this will have a lasting impact on academics, handling tough situations, and the whole school community. We can make people change their ways to make things more peaceful everywhere they go. Focus more, do their work more. It's just going to be a quiet, peaceful, and nice place. They grow emotionally as well as educationally. A school should be a place that gives calm, peace, and support to students so they can achieve their fullest potential. This has been Hunter Coleman, City School Student Media Team. See you soon. I gotta say, those middle schoolers expressing peace in their own way is really bringing the school community together as a whole. Absolutely. They're working hard to ensure that this movement stays with the school for a very long time. And I'm sure it will. These students truly have the brains and the teamwork to make it possible all over city schools. I definitely agree with you. Bringing positive vibes to city schools definitely changes the whole atmosphere. Now, we have to take a quick break, but stay tuned because up next we will take a look at the SAT prep classes at Western High School. We'll be right back after these messages. doing to prepare for college. Here at Baltimore City Public Schools, there are many opportunities for students to earn college credits while in high school. Dual enrollment allows students to take courses free of charge at local colleges. This way students get to know what it's really like to be in college. P-TECH is for students interested in a career in technology. Here at City Schools, we have three P-TECH programs, and each one comes with a diploma, tuition-free associate's degree, internships, and first access to jobs after graduation. For students who complete one of our award-winning career in technology education programs, they can earn industry certification and college credits. A ton of schools offer advanced placement classes. For students, success in the International Baccalaureate program can result in course credit, scholarships, and other admissions-related benefits after high school. So get a head start on college credits and save money by taking advantage of college prep opportunities right here at Baltimore City Public Schools. To learn more, go to www.baltimorecityschools.org forward slash college. This has been Jacqueline Hammett with the City School Student Media Team. See you next time. Work is underway on modernizing school buildings, like here at Fort Worthington Elementary Middle School. The type of school buildings we deserve. Our new schools will provide community-friendly spaces and be better for our environment. They will allow for innovative technology and 21st century teaching and learning. The 21st Century School Buildings Program is positively affecting my education and my city. That's right. Learn more about this major commitment from the state, city of Baltimore, and city schools by visiting baltimore21stcenturyschools.org. Building, Building a brighter future together. Welcome back to Building a Generation, our show for bringing together the best of what's happening across our very own Baltimore City Public Schools. 
that's true because this next story is evidence that proves exactly that. You're absolutely right. In this story, we will see how city school students are getting ready to prepare for the SAT test. Let's hop right into this next video where our very own city schools reporter, Imani, covers the importance of taking the SAT prep course. Hit it! Hey, this is Imani at Western High School to give everyone an inside look at the power of SAT prep. From what motivates students to the teachers committed to their success. Let's check it out. For the past several years at Western High School, students have had the opportunity to take both English and math prep. After all, the SATs are one of the largest barriers for our students when it comes to college choice. So let's see the importance of not only the SATs, but the hard work that goes into studying for the exam itself. So you get the English prep, you get the math prep, and so by the time you take the SATs, you're fully prepared and not just half prepared. SATs are important. Um, they kind of, they're one of the determining factors that you know tell you what schools you can get into. They know how different it is in like every section, so they know the tips, the specific tricks to teach us in every section. Having that person there to bounce the idea off of, of saying, okay, so I took this question on this app or on Khan Academy and I got it right or I got it wrong, um, but why is it right, right? And why is this actually wrong? And having that next layer is really what takes the students to that next level of improving their scores from possibly 20 to 30 points to improving to maybe 190 points. With the SATs right around the corner, we look towards our SAT prep family for advice on the best way to conquer the exam. Try to get books, SAT prep books from like libraries, local libraries, and do as much practice as possible. Khan Academy really helped me out. Friends that are as motivated as you to get a really high score to get into a really good college would help you um, motivate yourself to work outside of school. Study at a proper pacing. Don't try to cram test prep books and ask any teacher that's willing to help you or get a tutor is probably the best thing. Go on College Board and take the practice tests that are there. There are eight different practice tests that are there and they give you the correct answers and the reasons why they're right or wrong. And of course the other standard things like get a good night's sleep, that, that's not a joke. You know, really sleeping well and, uh, and eating well before is, is very important. We know it can be difficult to stay motivated while studying for the SATs, so we look towards a few of our students to get an inside look at what drives them to do their best. I work hard because I want to get a good paying job, I want to live comfortably and just help my family out as well as myself. And I really want to help my family, so just like getting, a, getting good grades and then like getting that 1500 or a, a good 1350 to get into good colleges without having to pay and just going on colleges in full rides. We have a lot of students at Western High School who are getting accepted into college, um, but gaining that higher SAT score can often get more dollars and more money for those students, um, which increases the access to the numerous different schools that they can actually go to and attend. Considering the importance of SATs, when it comes to college and career readiness, it's essential students take advantage of all available resources to ensure college access. Two days ago, my fellow juniors finished taking their SAT test, and today they're celebrating the finishing of the course. I'm Imani Humphrey Source with the City School Student Media Team. Good luck on your SAT. See you next time. Whoa, a ton of great info in that piece about the SATs. Definitely. It's a matter of how bad you really want to succeed in life, and the SATs are a big part of accomplishing that goal. Well, I know I want to go to college, so preparing for the SAT for me is a huge deal. Also a big deal, the fact that there's two schools being built right now in Southeast Baltimore. But with a special twist? Oh, really? Let's check it out. concrete, it becomes these vertical walls. Net Zero? That is so cool. We really do work hard as a district on green initiatives. And we'll continue to follow this story as construction continues. Alright folks, 
let's switch gears and return to our More Than a Game series with some spring sport action. Yes, the softball team at Mergenthaler Vocational Technical High School is working hard this season and we decided to stop by a practice. The crack of the bat, working on double plays and teamwork, it's softball season. Let's check it out. As a team, if we come together, we communicate, come to practice every day and actually work hard and practice, we can have a great season. Win or lose, we um we still will like we'll get the guy, we'll laugh it out or we'll talk about stuff we messed up on and just laugh at it and then fix it in practice. Today we're just working on basic fielding. We did a lot of plays, uh, double play action today, and just making sure that everybody's covering each other, making sure that we know where to send the ball when it comes to them. And then we get a game in after the fact. Come on, Tyon, look alive like you're ready to go. Good steal. The girls are learning a lot, they're having fun, and at the end of the day, that's what I want from them. I want to make sure that they're enjoying what they're doing and that they're learning a sport that they love. Being on the team for me was just a good step because it got my grades on track and then it got my mindset right too. I actually feel as though my attitude towards school has became better. Most of the JV team was still learning and coming together as a team, so it's going good so far. There you go. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Softball is not where it looks. It's actually hard work and dedication that goes into it. It's just like baseball. I feel like it's a lot of pressure, but I try to push through for my team. It just went from something to do into something I like, so I just continue doing it. I think that they are enjoying what they're doing. I think that they're building a sense of team and a sisterhood, and at the end of the day, that's what I want from them. I want to, them to enjoy what they're doing and for them to begin to love the sport. I know I have some girls that are brand new and some that are returning and that have played for several years, so hopefully it's something that they find that they like and they stick with it. Good job, Jay. Hey. Okay. Okay. Wow, that quote from the team captain was really powerful. Mm -hmm. I think this team really has what it takes. I think you might be right. I can't wait to catch them at their next game. Hey, guess what? What? It's time for the question, question of, of the, the show. show. All right. In an earlier story, which school created a peace wall to bring the school's community together? Was it A, Yorkwood Elementary School, B, Vanguard Collegiate Middle School, C, City Neighbors High School, or D, Hollibor Elementary Middle School? The correct answer is coming up right after these messages. Hi, I'm Imani, and I go to Western High School. I'm here to talk about school budgets. Not something you think I'd be interested in, right? But school budgets are about me, and they're about all students, and the teachers and parents, and everybody who makes school work. So we all know how budgets should work. So how can we make them work for us? The first step is knowing about the money. City school budget is more than $1 billion each year. About three quarters of that comes from the state of Maryland, and about a quarter of that comes from Baltimore City. We also get some dollars from the federal government and other sources. The amount we get is based mostly on how many kids go to Baltimore City Public Schools. The more students, the more dollars. Those dollars come mostly from taxes, that is, your school budget comes from you. So it's important they have a say in how the dollars are spent. So once we know about how much money the whole district should get, the second step is figuring out how much to go to each school. About 70% of the total district budget goes to schools. Most of the rest goes to schools too, but it's managed by the district office for things like electricity, trash removal, buses and MTA passes, school police, athletes, and a lot more. There are also dollars spent on administration that keeps the district running. That big 70% turns into an amount for each school. Every school gets a total amount based on how many students are expected to be at that school next year. There's a formula for figuring out the amount for each of the district's 30 or so charter schools, and another called fair student funding. That's used for schools that aren't charter. There are extra dollars depending on who the students are, like if they have disability, or are gifted, or if they're learning English. This year, the fair student funding formula started giving extra to schools that serve mostly low-income families. That's because these students can need extra support to do as well as kids who go to schools in neighborhoods that are better off and have more resources. The third step is the fun part. Once principals know how much money will be in their budget for the next year, they figure out what to spend it on. This is where I come in. 
Some money comes off the top to pay for principals, teachers for pre-K, and students learning English, career and technology education teachers, and some staff members who support students with disabilities. City schools call these locked positions because district policy and education law says schools are locked into having these people in schools. There are also additional unlocked dollars for staff members for special education based on individuals' needs of students in the school, and principals have to set aside money for this. But what's left over? This is where your principal needs to hear from you. Your school budget priority meeting is your chance to tell your principal what's most important to you at school to help him or her figure out how to spend those remaining dollars. So it's time to speak up. Your principal will also have a meeting to show you the school budget draft and the final submitted budget. So remember, it's your money and it's your school. Help make it work for you. Welcome back. Now it's time for the answer to the question on the show. In an earlier story, which school created a peace wall to bring the community together? Was it A, Yorkwood Elementary Middle School, B, Vanguard Collegiate Middle School, C, City Neighbors High School, or D, Hollibird Elementary Middle School? The correct answer is B, Vanguard Collegiate Middle School. The school students created a peace wall to promote peace around the school's community. And now, let's check out the last story of the episode. It takes place at the Columbus Center, where city schools held the first ever International Family Night. Students and families from around the world share the richness in their cultures over food, activities, dancing, and so much more. Let's take a look. Hey, this is Imani from the City School Student Media Team here at the Columbus Center to check out the very first ever International Family Night. It's all about celebrating the diversity of our families from all across city schools. It's going to be a fun night, so let's check it out. <laughs> having fun together, right? Being able to celebrate one another and just like the diversity of our schools and our city is on full display. These are our families. These are city schools families. I'm excited for see the different cult. I'm so excited too, you know? So I'm so happy. That's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> it just brings a wealth of culture and knowledge and experience that all of our kids and families can benefit from. It's important for families to be able to come together for, um, for good reasons like literacy and just education in general. So it brings you together and it makes life fun in a learning environment. It's important for me to have an event like this because we can see the community, how it's growing and how supportive we can be one to another one. I find a lot of good things here today, a lot of information for the Hispanic community. So can you tell us what the most fun has been for you tonight? Um, like the songs and everything, um, talking about um, other cultures like um, Africans, Latin and uh, American. It's important because we want to make people happy like celebrating for uh, Baltimore Public School. How is food important to a culture? I feel like you can express yourself through food and stuff like that. Food is usually the binding thing, and in families, that's usually the thing that gets you together. It's absolutely a part of the culture. It's a lot of different things that, you know, like if this table don't work for you, then this one will, as well as it, you know, it intrigues you to want to know more. You know, and actually for me, being city school alumni, I always support things of this order. Do you think the information being provided here will be truly beneficial to the families? Oh, absolutely. And you can see like everything from like literacy support, medical information, resources across the city for a number of our families who might be immigrants to our country. This is a great place to get connected. Uh, find out how to help your child be successful in school. City schools really appreciates them. And we are so honored that they have chosen to come to Baltimore City Public Schools and that they bring to rich diversity and history and culture to our district. To feel accepted and to feel important and to know that they belong in the community and that they are all loved. We have just seen some amazing performances, ate some delicious food, and got access to resources for all of our families here. This night was so important because it gives us an opportunity to connect with different families throughout Baltimore City. I'm Imani Humphrey Torres with the City of School Student Media Team. See you next time. You know, it's really cool to see different cultures from around the world interacting with each other and sharing their experiences. I agree, and the food was amazing. At least that's what I heard. 
anyways, we unfortunately have to wrap up this episode. But be sure to watch the Education Channel 77. And for more, head to Vimeo.com slash City Schools or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're everywhere. Yeah. I'm Alana Hines. And I'm Caleb Bogars. Thank, Thank you, you for, for building, building a generation. generation. See, See you next time. time.